If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be my April TBR, basically the books that I'm hoping to read this month. It's also my birthday month, so Emily is rocking the birthday hat this month, which I have to cover her face because my lens will focus on her, so we don't really see her well, but she's rocking it. I'm actually planning on posting a video on my birthday, the 12th, uh, so leave me any questions that you have. It's probably just going to be a Q&A, answering questions, having fun. So leave me any questions that you have in the comment section and I will try to answer as many as possible. Let's talk about the books that I'm hoping to read this month. First off, I'm planning on doing a few different reading challenges. So do you prefer me announcing them in advance so you can read them with me or do you want them to be a surprise? I feel like there's pros and cons to both. So let me know what you prefer. The first book I will be reading in April is The Sword of Kaijin, which is the book that you picked on the Patreon book club. So I will link that down below if you are interested in reading it with us. But this is a standalone adult fantasy, which there aren't enough out there. I feel like it's always series. And with the pandemic, I feel like I've had commitment issues with series. So a standalone, I believe it is Japanese inspired military and it has so many great reviews, but it's still underrated. I feel like there's less than 5,000 ratings on Goodreads, but everyone seems to really, really enjoy it. So I'm hoping that we will too. I am terrible at finishing series or even continuing them, so I'm trying to battle that and actually continue this one. I read The Girl and the Dragon Tattoo in February, so I'm hoping to read book two, which is The Girl Who Played With Fire in April. I really, really enjoyed the other one. It's super popular. I feel like everyone has read it, except me. <laughs> but it was so worth it, and I completely understand the hype now. The writing, really great, flows really nicely. I read that chunky book in like less than a week, so I'm less intimidated by book two. I'm still a little scared, not gonna lie. It's still like 500 pages, but I'm hoping I will be able to go through it quite as fast. This one, I believe you told me that it's following more um, Lisbeth, which I did enjoy as a character. I think this one has more of a background story and I'm all for it. So yes, I'm hoping I will, I will devour this one as fast. Really fantastic mystery. I have no idea what the rest of the series will be like, but we'll try it. So you know how I mentioned some reading challenges. This month I'll just announce them because what the heck, but if you prefer them being surprises, I can adapt in the future. But one thing that you will notice is that I'm doing more reading vlogs. I did a couple in February. I did a couple this month. There's one more coming up uh, this weekend. I'm hoping to do at least two a month. I feel like they're fun and I like when they have a team. And if they don't have a team, it might be like 24 hour reading one. But I like choosing teams because they can be recurrent so you can look forward to the upcoming ones. One thing that I'm starting is going to be reading your favorites in certain genres. So you will be able to choose whichever. This one is a little less obvious just because I've been subtly asking you your favorite ones for this specific genre, which is historical fiction. Not something I read a ton of. And I mentioned how I am so over World War II, especially romance ones. I, I can't do this. I feel like some of them are not really well written, like The Tattooist of Auschwitz super badly written. I had so many issues with it and I feel like it's almost a cop out because it's going to be sad because obviously these events are sad. So I made you vote suddenly like I was saying and the two books that I picked. The first one is The Kite Runner. Essentially it was mostly about the author Khaled Hosseini because everyone seems to love him. Like everyone. I have yet to read anything by him because I know I'm going to cry. <laughs> I don't like crying when I read books but everyone seems to love him. Apparently he's very quotable. So this one, I will try the physical book and put post-its wherever I feel the need to. I do have access to the audiobook, worst case scenario at my library. And I also had put uh, The Thousand Splendid Sons, I think, by him. So if that one is so much better, let me know. But I think I might try this one. I think it's the most popular one. So this is the first one that you don't know, but you picked. <laughs> and then the next one is The Huntress by Kate Quinn, which, I believe this was part of the nominees in the Goodreads Choice Award in 2019. So it is popular. A lot of you did also mention that it was fantastic. I think it starts with World War II, but then it goes like later on too. And what sold me is the fact that you're following one of the main characters who is part of the Night Witches, which is an all-female night bomber regiment. So yes, 
please. It's also quite chunky. Uh, this one is over 500 pages too. I do also have access to the audiobook at my library. So what I'll probably do is try that one physically, start the audiobook of this one, and then when I'm done with this one physically, I'll continue this one physically. We'll see. I'll adapt uh, whichever works best. If I don't like the audiobook, I'll just try to read a physical one too. So yes, this is going to be my first challenges of reading your favorite ones, historical fiction. And on that specific video, I will let you know what is the next genre so you can vote on the books that you want me to read next in that genre. And then I will try to do them regularly, maybe like every two, three months. We'll see how it goes. But yes, First off, historical fiction. Did I choose right? I specifically wanted to go with genres that I don't read a ton of. Historical fiction, I probably read like four a year, so two in one go, definitely step up. I keep wanting to read more nonfiction, but I tend to favor audiobooks, which not a bad way of uh, reading them, especially because I tend to read physical books later at night, so audiobooks can be throughout the day, so it's just easier on me. But I have quite a few on my shelves that have been there for a while, and I'm trying to get better at reading the books on my shelf. I mean, with the pandemic, I haven't bought any books pretty much in a year. So I wanted to finally get around to reading this one, which is In Order to Live, A North Korean Girl Journey to Freedom, which is probably gonna be a tough read. It's not super big, but I probably will read it slowly throughout the month just because of the topic, which, oh my God, there are pictures of little kids. When they have chubby cheeks and chubby ties, I can't deal. I'm expecting this to be pretty hard hitting, but I've heard really great things. And again, it has been on my shelf for too long and I'm trying to get around to reading them more often. I feel like I should probably make like a challenge next year of reading like one nonfiction a month or something. I'll keep that in mind. I'm trying to also get better at continuing reading from authors that I do enjoy because I tend to just not do that. I'm scared that basically reading another book will ruin the author for me. But I read in March a book by Octavia E. Butler, loved it, so I want to read more by her. And I have a few options that I had on my shelf. Technically this is like eight books in one, but three different uh, series. One is a standalone, which is Parable of the Sower. I have the Seed to Harvest Courtlet and I have the Lilith's Broad trilogy. So if you have read them, please let me know which one I should start with. Worst case scenario, I'll just read more about them and choose one to do probably a reading vlog. Maybe I'll do a 24 hour trying to read a whole book by her or a whole trilogy or courtlet by her. <laughs> you decide. Uh, but yes, I love that she tends to mix difficult topics like gender, race, and uh, sci-fi elements, which I love sci-fi, so I think it's a good challenge to give myself to try and continue reading from an author I've enjoyed. So one of these will be read this month. A few books from my library before I forget. I have The Bone Shard Daughter, which is another adult fantasy series. It's the first book in the series. So far it has been getting great reviews and I'm hoping I will also enjoy it. Definitely check it out if you also want to read it in April. I have this, I think it's exclusively an audiobook. And I said it was Brandon Sanderson, and I believe there's another author, it's just my library, whenever I look at it, it just said Brandon Sanderson, but if I look closely, I believe it's Mary Robinette Cowell, and it's called The Original. I literally don't know anything else except the title, and I saw Brandon Sanderson, and I was like, what the heck, it's an audiobook, I like audiobooks. <laughs> so I'll let you know when I wrap up how that goes. Yeah, I believe a few of you told me that it wasn't super great, but I'll try it, we'll see. I also want to, to continue the series, the second book being Arrow the Night, which is such a weird like sci-fi fantasy series. I read the first one, which is, which is Gideon the Night, and I was pleasantly surprised. Super weird, but not necessarily in a bad way. People described it to me, that's what sold it to me, was uh, lesbian necromancers <laughs> in space. and. Yeah, that kind of works, I guess. So that was the first book. So I'm curious uh, with the ending of the first book, I'm really curious to see how that, that's gonna continue because how. So yes, hopefully I'll have time to get around to listening to that audiobook this month. Last but not least, if I have time, because my TBR is already a little ridiculous, but when is it not? Um, I want to do a second edition of reading authors, like giving authors a last chance or second chance, depending. And I've done one in the past, it's been a little while, and I have two more authors that I want to try again. The first one is Naomi Novik, the book being A Deadly Education. And I know people have been having like complicated feelings about it, but it has one of my favorite setting, which is a magical school. So I wanna try it because I'm hoping I will enjoy it. I've heard the critiques, but I still, 
I'm hoping, I'm hoping. So yes, I'm gonna go through that one as an audiobook. Hopefully that works out okay. The cover is gorgeous and again, magical school. The other author is gonna surprise a few of you and it is Riley Sager. Sorry, I just wanted to take the time to correct myself. It's Riley Sager. I keep mispronouncing it and it's bothering me when I'm editing. Uh, he's coming out with a new book, a fifth book, which I'll put it on screen. I have an arc. I can't remember the title right now, something night. I know some of you will be surprised because I have read four of his books so far, all four that he has, and this is the fifth one he's coming out with. I'm putting him in that challenge because all four times so far, I have had a ton of issues with his main female character. And I've mentioned how, you know, some authors, there's been this movement in like mystery thrillers. The main audience is female readers. And I feel like a lot of male authors will use their initials or rallies kind of sounds, could be anyone and having a main female character to try and sell to the audience. And I have an issue because I've seen no improvement with his female characters. It has always been my main complaint about his books and every time they just suck. I would rather him write from a male point of view then continue writing these kind of female characters. So I wanna give him a last chance because even though I don't hate the book, I'm tired of reading a female character that is badly written. So yes, that's why he will be included in that challenge. And if I still have a ton of issues, I will stop reading from him because there are so many other authors I would rather read. So yes, I think this is it. I think these are all so far, at least the books that I'm hoping to read in the month of April. It's still a bit early in March, so I'm hoping I will have time to finish all the ones I am planning. Because <laughs> otherwise I will have to mention again, Children of God, and I better have time to finish it because I'm filming this on the 21st, so I still have 10 days. But like, I better have time to read this one, otherwise it's in April. So that's gonna be it for today's video. Please again, don't forget to ask me any questions that you want me to answer in my Q&A. Let me know in the comment section if you have read any of these books, what you thought of them, spoiler free, obviously, or if there are any books that you are planning on reading in April, I wanna know. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be posting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out. And I will see you in so many more videos in April. Bye.